Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a very interesting trigonometric equation from IMO 1962, which means this is an international math olympiad problem from 1960s, while well, IMO started in 1959 with a few countries not including the United States, and the problems were a lot easier then. If you check the most recent problems, you're going to find that, that they are proof problems and they're pretty complicated. So this is a gigantic test, by the way, which takes nine hours to complete in two sittings, in two days, four and a half hours each, just like the USAMO. And the problems are usually of proof type and each problem you're given one and a half hours, which could take you know, 40 minutes of planning and then 40 minutes of writing the proof. Anyways, so let's go ahead and see how we can solve an easy version of an IMO problem. We're going to go ahead and first of all, take a look at this equation, try to absorb it. Cosine squared x plus cosine squared 2x plus cosine squared 3x is equal to 1. I'm going to talk about one thing that might be helpful in solving the problem, but I don't want to give it away. So I'm going to talk about it later if I don't forget. Okay, remind me if I do. But we're going to go ahead and start by using some identities. For example, what is cosine of 2x? Do you know? Well, cosine of 2x can be written in three different ways. Cosine, uh, double angle for cosine. But we want to use the one with the cosine. If you know what that means, cosine 2x can be written as 2 cosine squared x minus 1. So that's something we can replace cosine 2x with. Of course, we're going to square it, but that's what it is. And then what about cosine of 3x? And we're going to leave the cosine x alone, of course. Cosine of 3x can be written as 4 cosine cubed x minus 3 cosine of x. And you can find this by using cosine of 2x plus x and using the sum formula and then using the double angle formulas. Or you can use complex numbers, which makes it a lot easier. The Moyers formula or, you know, polar form, whatever you want to call it. Thanks to Euler, we have that beautiful formula. By the way, if you like complex numbers, go ahead and check out my other channel, which is A plus BI, where I focus on complex numbers only. So let's see how we can use these two things in our equation. Obviously, cosine squared x is going to stay the same, but we need to replace cosine 2x with 2 cosine squared x minus 1. And then, of course, we need to square that. You know, this is going to bug me, so I have to separate them. Plus... Cosine of 3x. Now, notice that here we can actually factor out a cosine of x. And inside, we're going to have cosine squared x minus 3. This means cosine of 3x is divisible by cosine x, which, which is really cool, right? So it always divides uh, cosine 3x. And when you square it, you're going to get something like this. This will be squared and this will be squared because it's a product, right? And at the end, it's equal to 1. So what we need to do next is expand and expand and expand, like simplify everything, right? Let's go ahead and do it. So we're going to get cosine squared of x plus 4 times cosine to the fourth power of x. Here we kind of have uh, the plus 1 and then minus 4 cosine squared of x, which is 2ab thing. Plus, you kind of need to maybe square this first and then distribute cosine squared. So it's going to be 16 times cosine to the fourth plus 9 minus 24 times cosine squared of x, and the whole thing is equal to 1. You already know that. Now let's go ahead and distribute cosine squared of x, 4 cosine to the fourth power, plus 1 minus 4 cosine squared of x, and then plus 16 cosine to the sixth power, and then plus 9 cosine squared of x, minus 24 cosine to the fourth power. And this is equal to 1. Again, right? Didn't fit. So now uh, we have this expression, but it can be simplified, right? Let's go ahead and add like terms. Which terms are like terms? For example, we can start with the highest power, can't we? This is 16 cosine to the sixth power. Let's write that first. And the next one would be the fourth power. We have 4 cosine to the fourth minus 24 cosine to the fourth. That's going to give you minus 20 times cosine to the fourth power of x. And then the next thing is going to be cosine squared. We have 1 plus 9, which is 10. 10 minus 4 is 6, so it's going to be plus 6 cosine squared of x. 
and best of all, one cancels out, leaving us with zero. Beautiful. This is not only nice, it's also very good in terms of factoring because we can factor out 2 cosine squared x. And inside, we get 8 cosine to the fourth power of x minus 10 cosine squared of x plus 3. Great. So from here, we get two things. Either cosine squared is equal to 0 or this is equal to 0. But what does that mean? Well, this is factorable. If you think of cosine squared x as y, this is going to be like 8y squared minus 10y plus 3. And by the x method or y method, whichever you want to use, this is factorable into 2y minus 1 and 4y minus 3. You could also do this, like use the quadratic formula to solve it, and then from the solutions, you can go to the factors by using the factor theorem. I hope that makes sense. But this now can be written as follows. 2 times cosine squared of x multiplied by 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. That's going to be one of the factors that comes from 2y minus 1. Remember, y is cosine squared, right? And then the other factor is just going to be 4 cosine squared of x minus 3. And the whole thing is equal to 0. Yay! Everything is factored. Isn't that cool? Yes. Now, we can go ahead and kind of take a look at each one of these separately. But one thing to remember, though, one thing to remember. If you look back, you're going to see this 4 cosine squared minus 3 one more time. Uh-oh. It's actually cosine 3x divided by cosine x. So this is cosine 3x divided by cosine x. Nice. And then this one is cosine of 2x. Remember that? Because that was the double angle formula we just used. Well, can't we solve the problem as is? Yes, but we're going to approach it a little bit differently because it, this is going to show you a really cool identity, okay? From here, we get the following. 2 cosine squared of x times cosine of 2x times cosine of 3x divided by cosine of x. Remember, I had told you cosine x divides cosine 3x. That's why we get this expression. One of these will cancel out. And since it's equal to 0, we can also divide by 2 or just totally, totally forget about 2. Now, this gives us something amazing. Cosine of x times cosine of 2x times cosine of 3x is equal to 0. Beautiful. Now, I'm going to tell you what I was supposed to tell you, but not at the beginning, right? So, if you remember the original problem, this is an IMO problem, by the way, International Math Olympiads, but guess what? Those people were super lucky. At that time, problems were so easy. A high schooler that did a little bit of competitions could solve most of those problems. Right now, it's nearly impossible. So you need to study like crazy. Anyways, remember the original problem was like this. And what do we know about cosine if we're looking for real solutions, which is, of course, we are. Cosine cannot exceed 1. Therefore, cosine squared cannot exceed 1 either. So what does that mean? It means that if you're adding two numbers that has to be less than or equal to 1, and if one of them is 1, the others have to be 0. Do you know what I'm talking about? Exactly. So this product being zero is closely related to this because that's where it comes from, obviously. But isn't that a really cool identity, don't you think? I mean, it just comes like it turns the sum of squares to a product, which is basically made up of the same thing. So it's kind of like a squared plus b squared plus c squared is equal to one, which implied a, b, c equals zero. Beautiful, right? Great. Now, let's go ahead and see how we can do this. Well, we can safely say from here that cosine x is 0, or cosine 2x is 0, or cosine 3x is 0. We have to look at each case, right? What does that mean, though? Well, wait a minute. If cosine x is 0, think about it, x can be pi over 2, or 3 pi over 2, or negative pi over 2. And when you triple the angle, because 3 is an odd number, and these are odd multiples of pi over 2, the result is going to be the same angles. In other words, if cosine x is 0, this is the most beautiful part, I think. If cosine x is 0, that implies cosine 3x equals 0. So we don't really need to look at that anymore because we already have this result. So all we need to check is these two things. Isn't that cool? So here's what we need to do. If cosine of 2x is equal to 0, then we can write 2x as... Remember, 
I told you the odd multiples, so we can write it as 2n plus 1, multiply by pi over 2, and this is just going to cover all the possibilities, and then you can go ahead and divide everything by 2, x will be 2n plus 1, I don't want to change that, multiply by pi over 4. In other words, odd multiples of pi over 4, 1 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, you name it, they're all going to be solutions. And then if you look at cosine of 3x, let's write it here maybe. If cosine of 3x is equal to 0, then from here, what are we getting? Then x can be, or 3x can be, the odd multiples of pi over 2 again. But this time, we're going to go ahead and divide by 3. So it's going to be 2n plus 1 multiplied by pi over 6, which means solutions are odd multiples of pi over 6 or just 30 degrees. And guess what? These are all the solutions and n is an arbitrary integer. If you want to change this to another variable, perfectly fine, but n is an integer. And this is it. And you can actually go ahead and graph this equation to see where the solutions are. I believe I intended to make a graph on Desmos, but I probably forgot to bring it here. Sorry about that. I apologize. I'll try to remember next time. But this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI, and bye-bye.